Hello, visionary. So I am really excited to share with you a little bit in this video about base. Now, before I go deep into the intel, I first want to have this discussion about advanced human design and the introduction, the basics of human design. So when I started my human design experiment, I was deeply moved by discovering I was a projector, incredibly powerful for me. I didn't set out to want this to be my business or want this to be my life. It just was learning about human design to survive the intensity of climbing the corporate ladder and having a brick and mortar business, the intensity of working a long day as a projector and just getting to the point of extreme bitterness, being upside down, being destroyed, basically. Nothing described it like human design, even after a lifetime of studying spiritual tools, techniques, having a degree in spiritual psychology. So I studied. I didn't know that I was an investigator at that time because I was just beginning the journey. And they say in human design, it takes a full seven years to decondition, no matter how much work you've done on yourself. And they say that most people doing seven-centered spiritual work are working on their not self. I did not believe this when I first heard this, but now I can see it very clearly that all, not all, not all, but a lot of my wounding, a lot of my processing was all based on processing stuff that wasn't mine and then being conditioned and creating a life that was based on the conditioning of whatever group I was in at that time. So when it comes to the human design experiment, we have to be in some way grounded in the experiment of strategy and in our authority, deeply, deeply grounded in the experiment. Now, when you're learning this stuff and someone says, okay, here's your strategy, here's your inner authority, it takes five minutes to explain what it is. And so the mind is like, oh, I got that. Now I need more information. I need more, I need more, I need more. The mind is never satisfied, okay? The mind wants more. Now, if you compare that to addiction, you compare it to alcoholism, tobacco, food, even something more like something that we all see more as a drug addict, like cocaine, crack, heroin, you know, like really extreme shit. You can see the out of control nature of wanting more and more and more and more and how the wanting of the more takes on a life of its own. When someone's an addict, you can see that their life is out of balance. There is a more, a wanting, a drive for that thing. Emotions can be addictive as well. In, in being addicted to victim consciousness, being being addicted to drama. I mean, that absolutely is an addiction. That's revealed in the not self themes of being an undefined solar plexus, right? But what's not revealed is how the mind itself becomes addictive quality to wanting more and more information. Now you can see where this is leading. I'm going to be discussing an advanced concept in human design, but I want to do it with integrity. And I want to do it from the place of awareness and the depth that it takes to understand human design and the journey and the process of deconditioning. It's no joke. The real courage is when you heal and live in the truth and in your own unique strategy and inner authority, but it goes much deeper than that. Now, those of you who are called to my work and who enjoy my energy and my frequency, you're probably on my fractal, you're here because we're connected on some level. You know that I do not dismiss spiritual teachings the way most people in human design do, because I know the value. According to human design, we evolved into the nine centered being and human design is basically the intel that is teaching you how to operate correctly in this nine centered world. The spiritual community, however, has knowledge that unfortunately the human design community based on the community I've seen doesn't really understand. One of the things that the spiritual community knows very well is about healing from past trauma, wounds, and addiction. The addiction of narcissistic abuse, the addiction of substances, the addictions of emotions. And to do that, you need to go into a deep process of self-care and self-nurturing because the addiction itself 
is like a not self theme and it can be radically used to justify behavior. So in other words, if you're looking for the heroin, okay, what happens is that every single thing is a justification. Every single thing the mind says is a justification for getting the next fix. All of the life force goes to that. This knowledge came to me first from Carolyn Meese and why it's so useful to um, explore. And, you know, now there is a lot of argument for using the psychedelics for, you know, microdosing, for chemical state shift and healing, anger, healing, wounding. So it's complex. Okay, I'm not giving you a black and white. There's a complexity to the human experience. But one of the things that Carolyn May said is that your addictions actually stop your spiritual growth because it's an energy field. So when you have, she would call it a hundred strands of life force energy. And if you wake up in the morning and you give five strands of energy to your ex-boyfriend, five strands to that drama, five strands of energy to that cigarette, and then, you know, 50 strands of energy to um, whatever addictions are playing out. Then you have no life force that is in alignment to make choices. Now, this goes to the whole <laughs> complexity of no choice. Because really, when you are in that addictive process, you have no choice. You are run by addictions. So in human design, they actually say no choice is a positive because you're aligning to the magnetic monopole and you are living out the life that you're designed to live. You can see how there's so many complexities when you use a, just like a a catchphrase like no choice because the mind is an infinite maze of dichotomies and so what what spirituality does is it pushes you into a simple space of the witness consciousness that is not a concept that is solely designated to human design it is vastly used through history on um, from all of the mystics and so but it's simple there's a simplicity to it but if the mind is trapping you into telling you why you need to do certain things then you lose the connection to source and or if you're in the not self you don't you're never living out the highest expression of your design if you're in your addiction you're never able to live out a freedom to actually even live your design, okay? And addiction is can be seen in alcoholism or needing alcohol to feel confident and to socialize. It can even be coffee. It can be, I would say this is a healthy addiction, <laughs> you little furry friends. But the point is, is that one of the gifts that the spiritual community has is this 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 intention to to heal and to nurture the physical body so that the physical body can actually live out its true nature and to live out it from my perspective also the human design that you are born to live it's very hard to see where you're off frequency when you're is so consumed by wanting more coffee, alcohol, any type of substance or intel. So the reason I'm giving such a heavy start to this is because if you're just wanting more and more and more of the human design intel and you're not willing to be brutally honest about where you're in your mind and where you're in the not self of the addictive behavior of more and more and more intellectual stimulation and all that goes with them, you miss the depth of the exploration, which is personal life transformation and becoming through the journey, this incredible being of uniqueness. It is not for the faint of heart. Just like if any of you have pulled your soul back from a cigarette or from a drama or from an ex that you were addicted to, you know that it's not an easy journey. It's Deep. I do initiate many people on the human design path. 
many people who are brand new to the experiment, many people who have been on a spiritual path for a very long time, and they're just now getting into human design. If that's where you are, I recommend you join in our Facebook group, The Spiritualized Entrepreneurs. It's really about spiritual beings who are taking on the human design experiment and going to new levels of merging the spiritual awakening with human design. And if you're curious about this more advanced information, because base really is a deep level of human design, then have some fun, but know that it is mind candy and know that it is not even... Um, usable until you really know your strategy and inner authority. Now, I want to add another point to this. I see a lot of human design teachers who don't teach these advanced comments of base tone color. And then it's not that they devalue it, but they sort of do. Like, you don't need that. You don't need to understand that. Or I thought I didn't need to understand it for a very long time because that's what my teachers taught me. But learning it has radically led me into another level of depth with my human design particularly motivation. Now, I don't think that they're all equal, in my opinion, the four radical transformations, the diet, the environment, the view, and the motivation. I think that motivation, when integrated into the life, is as radical as type. And Ra does say it's the second most important thing for projectors. So I really do feel that it should be more readily available for everybody to understand. If you're curious about your motivation, I do have a lot of videos on that. So I will link some below. I do have more videos on that in the Foxy 5D if you want more information about your specific motivation, foxy5d.com. Motivation is a game changer and it's simple. It doesn't need to be complicated. Look, human design doesn't need to be complicated. It's a piece of intel for you to radically change your life and it should be used for as many people as are interested to know. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to intellectually study every single detail to be transformed powerfully and radically by the information. Now, if you're like me and you're an investigator and you do need to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the levels, then this video is for you. So thank you for being part of my community, for recognizing me so deep, powerful for me. So I will look forward to seeing you on the inside. Why would you? going to talk about base primarily in this video, but as we're looking at it, we really do have to look about look at it through base tone color. All of them are important as we look at the neutrino stream and how it activates a gate. So it starts through the base and then it moves through the tone and then the color and then the line. So you can see that there are a lot of variations that you can get through each gate. So as we're introducing the hexagram line structure, the goal is to empower the uniqueness of each person, to see that within each gate, there are so many different potentialities. We are born as humans with this potentiality to break free from homogenized world, from the homogenization that we see everywhere, we see every day, and we see in our own life. We are born to be unique. It is the spiritual awakening. It is the epiphany. And it is really what human design is doing. It's awakening us to our individuality, unlike any other system. What we see here is we see the entry frequency going through the base. Just the word itself, this entry frequency, it brings us down to this feeling and this tonality of the depth. And when you hear the word bass, you know, you just can't help but feel the bass guitar and like feel the energy and the frequency of what happens to a room when we turn on the bass. And this is the entry. This is what is the neutrino stream moving through the crystal. Then we have the inner frequency, which is the tone and the exit frequency, which is the color. And as I said, there are a thousand potentials for each gate. We have the vehicle design crystal and the personality 
crystal. So the personality is in the head. The design crystal is in the Ajna. So we are nothing but frequency. This is not a concept that is solely designated to human design. This is seen in many spiritual teachings, including epigenetics, including law of attraction work and David Hawkins. They all talk about this frequency and they also talk about the illusion of solidity. But this is all dependent on our frequency. So when you take authority away from the mind, you align yourself to new frequency, the power of form. The power of the design. It's the infinite intelligence of the vehicle consciousness that most of humanity can't even understand. Most scientists don't know what the brain really is or what consciousness is. The healing of the body, the spontaneous healing that's available is so beyond our mind. But the magnetic monopole is holding together the illusion of separation. So we have the design and the personality coming together in the magnetic monopole, and it's holding together this illusion. And then the energy of the color gets trapped in the magnetic monopole, and it gets trapped into the transference. The magnetic monopole captures the design and personality to create the body, mind, and the life holistically. So you can see how the color here, the exit is the color, the transferred motivation when the vehicle is not living correctly in the strategy and inner authority. So as the exit frequency of the color from the design and personality goes through the magnetic monopole, um, we have the subconscious and the con the conscious come together in this perceived Maya illusion that we call life. Most people don't understand this transference. It's an intense one. Uh, we are constantly transferred in color. When the not-self mind takes over the consciousness, we have mind over matter, and then we have transferred Color. This means the information or the cognitive gifts of the tone do not get realized. So the way I like to word this is once you are in your true motivation, your superpower of tone begins to turn on. They work hand in hand. Okay, they work together and the value of life or meaning of life gets taken over by the thinking mind when you're in your transference. It grabs hold of you, it pulls you under, it's like living into the undertow and you think you're creating your life, but really you're just swimming in the illusion of the not self. This thinking mind creates an upside down world of illusions. Now let's talk about this base, this entry level. And really, even though it's the entry level, we really don't want to learn it until after you know your color and your tone and the, and the line, which is your profile. So I do recommend that you look into the color, you explore your superpower of your tone, and then the next level is this base. There are five bases. And... I grabbed this little visual from Ra, and he's showing you how interconnected these bases are, how it it starts with the one, it moves into the evolution, it moves into the being and the design, and then the five comes out of the four through space. So let's go through the five bases. With base, there are only five. You will find the bases in the square in your advanced chart. So let me show you where you'll see your base. So you'll see here that this personality base is two. Now, the crazy thing about the bases is that they do change very quickly. So if you don't know your exact time, it's quite possible you don't know your base. In the same context, bases can be contemplated on their own. And just hearing about it will spark some ahas for you, even if you don't know your own base, because we are all responsible for the illusion. We're all responsible for this energy. So I'm going to go through 
um, the bases. They are presented as a square, as I showed you. The orientation coloring in one of the corners and the orientation is that you are going to know the kind of people that you find that you're drawn to and the people you want to do nothing you want to have nothing with like this is seen in the base and correct orientation is where you're pulled and to whom you're pulled you're pulled towards when Ra began his journey through the bases they called it when he started talking about the magic squares he lost it this is when we go so deep principles of energy and the evolutionary experience of being human and coming together, reacting to each other and creating this personality. They also say that the base is what you experience throughout all of your many lifetimes. Ra says that the base is the configuration and fundamental principle of all things. Okay, so I'm going to go through each one of these. When I say we are all responsible for the illusion, in this structure of base, what we're saying is that base is the foundation of the illusion, saying that we all exist through the formation of each other. So the personality will be brought together. So if you'll notice the personalities in the middle here, this is base five, which is the personality which comes from all of the other four bases. And it doesn't exist on its own. And they say that this base five is really able to have a, a popularity amongst all the other four bases because it's touching all of the other four, four dimensions, actually. And it's not time. It's dimensions through space. It's birthed this fifth base, but it can't be done alone. So when I say we're all responsible for, for base, literally each base is connected to the other, but somehow pushed and repelled and and drawn to based on the configuration, which is really kind of fascinating. So the illusion is based on the space of the existence of each other coming together. So it goes in this way, the movement is base one, the evolution is base two, this being and body is, is base three, the um, design ego is base four, and then it births, all of them come together and are holding the personality through the center. And this is the personality. So this is all um, the base on the personality side. And if we were on the design side, this would shift and it would be the design at the middle. Base one, reactive movement, individuality. Base one, is the forceful action from place to place. I mean, think about it. We're moving through space and time, and this is the force that takes you. Whenever you have movement in sacred geometry, you have the one point, and when it moves, it's two points, but the movement itself is a line and a frequency so you're always connected to the other and so this is what begins all of the humanity's expression is through the base one it moves life's fo life forward it's in action it's in motion it's the exploration it's towards something it's birthing it's doing it's moving it's that no one before them has achieved. It's reactive. You know, no one before them, meaning this is something unique. It's individual. And it's reactive. It's going from place to place. So I am base one. And I just absolutely resonate with this. I have been moving from place to place ever since I 
moved out of my family home when I was 18. I think I stayed in one place for three years at a time until I came to human design and started realizing how detrimental that is for a projector who needs to be invited first. But I relate to this movement and this feeling and needing to move, move, move. And then the base two is the evolution. It's the integrative. It's the mind. Base two is the collective of all of the movement. It's it's evolving into the collective expression, the understanding of the movement, right? The understanding of the the context of what is in the past and it's moving through stories or it's moving through roles that people have put on and through their separation of self. It's base two that wants to kind of build the constitution. They create something and then they build their distinction. They build their prominence. They build a structure. They become ornate and decorated in that separateness. And they sort of need to stand out. They need to be above the other in their stature. They need to um, adorn themselves or outwit the other or be smarter than kind of find their progress of of separation or standing above and in, in distinction through the the mind and then we come to the base 3 which is the being and the body the base 3 is how the movement of the individuality and the mind of the base one and the base two are coming together in the form and in the body and in the evolution of humanity, right? It, it's moving through this um, objective procreation and bring these bodies together in this sort of receptive nature, but how are you going to be together? How are we going to have the forms of humanity move to the expansion? And that's through this, you know, making of the babies, the procreation that connection right the the um, sexual connection the genetic vehicle form where we connect sexually in order to you know push the humanity forward and expand and connect and thrive and flourish through the flow through the reception through the seduction of humans to connect and to find each other dancing together and um, discovering how we will get along in that movement. And then the base four is this ego, progressive structure. And I know that ego is a word we use in human design for one of the centers. This is more talking about the ego structure that is more traditionally found in the mind where we're sort of coming together in kind of like, how are we going to, who's going to be in charge? How are we going to be in charge? You know, how is this structure going to build societies and what kind of strength are we going to use what kind of clout are we going to use to make this happen and that is the ego is it going to be 
an ego that is progressive in a positive way or are we going to have sort of that forceful negative brute force kind of um, ego that is going to make something happen through that you know yang force so all of this, if you talk about how we're moving, we're evolving, we've got the mind, we've got the body, we've got this sexuality, we've got society, we've got all of these things, and it's moving through space, and it's popping into the center of this square, this personality which which touches everything. So if you're talking about movement, it's like moving away and it's individual, but the personality is touching everything. So it's more in what people would express as is something that can relate to all all of the all of the bases, but it can't survive alone. None of them do. So that's what's really interesting. When I say we're all responsible for this illusion, we're all holding this base form. And again, what's interesting to me is that these concepts really come back to sort of this quantum ideology, this physics of um, existence where it's not just the, the linear time we're adding space and dimension here and then the personality in practical terms it's being shown as somebody who if they have a base five that they actually can create something that's more popular like everyone will relate to it if it's a if it's a book that they're writing it's going to be something that everybody will be able to um, relate to and it might be that one that's more popular like rather than an you know sort of a a abstract piece of literature that no one relates to it's going to be the Stephen King or something that everyone sort of understands and relates to and it, everyone can talk about it on the train station at the train station or you know, when you're waiting at the airport, like it's going to be something that everyone's going to be able to chew on because the five touches everyone. It's the four corners coming together. So it's the energy that we can all relate to as opposed to the juxtaposition of the individuality, right? In the base one, it's the fractal how people come together on the fractal. We talk a lot about why. We talk a lot about speaking to those people who are on your fractal. Everyone you know, every single person you know, you can probably write on one page the amount of people that you know throughout the entire history of your life that you've really been friends with and connected and had a deep relationship with. And yet, if you go to anywhere, go to the mall, there's going to be hundreds of people you don't know and you will never have a relationship with. They're extras in your movie. This is configuration. The fractal are your people. Okay, this is all coming from base. This is base, the configuration fundamental principle of all things. It's deep. So let it resonate with you just a little bit. You also don't need to get lost in it. Ra did not spend too much time on base or this is where he spiraled out of control, really. But I do think it's fun to know. And I think if you just tap into it, kind of explore a little bit as we did here today, it can be really fun to look at. And so I want to leave you today with a quote from Ra. The bases are the root of our transcendent incarnating process. As a matter of fact, when one looks at the concept of the human personality crystal, which has five facets. Only one of those facets is functional. This is the base of the personality. And since the personality crystal is the only aspect of our process that is, relatively speaking, eternal, that has been in existence from the Big Bang, the fact that one operates through a specific base is what leads to a deep insight into one's incarnation purpose. Now, this is a lot of words and 
kind of doesn't even really make sense if you really listen to it. But there's a power and a depth to his exploration here. And I think what he's trying to say is that the base that we are in resonating with is a deep part of our purpose, our incarnation, and our soul's journey through lifetime upon lifetime of being human. And so contemplate how your base is resonating for you, how it might be resonating through the rest of your chart. Obviously, it's one aspect of many, many aspects in your chart. I actually do think that you should learn a little bit about color and tone before base. I'll put a couple of those videos in the description below. But I hope you enjoyed today's sort of exploration. I know that it resonated with me. I had some ahas as I contemplated my base. So I hope you did as well. And I'd love to hear which one you are. It, it's always wonderful to have a discussion in the comments below. So please feel free to share with me any of your aha moments or what base you're in and if you resonated with the description of that base. <music>